Hello, this is News Now from the Belmont Journal, and I am joined by Lisa Gibellario, Prevention Specialist with Wayside Youth and Family Support Network and Coordinator of the Belmont Wellness Coalition. And I'm your host, Mike Crowley. Today, we're talking about guidance for parents with children who are struggling. And thank you so much for talking with us about such an important topic, Lisa. So um, let me start, Lisa, by by um, asking this, you know, we're heading into our 13th month of the pandemic. What is your sense of how kids are generally doing? Well, Mike, it seems from what I'm hearing, it does vary greatly. Um, some kids are really rolling along pretty well and they've kind of adjusted to this new normal. However, um, there is more concerning news out there, not only in Belmont, but from national surveys that um, kids are struggling as well. The social isolation for 13 months is taking its toll. Kids are reporting feeling lonely, um, feeling hopeless. One of our student ambassadors on the Belmont Wellness Coalition reported that her ninth grade class, there's just a feeling of overwhelm, of despair and of, of hopelessness and that kids are just really waiting for the school year to end. So I think that there are sleep disturbances that are still happening. Um, and we know that anxiety um, is present for a lot of kids and an overall for some kids disinterest in school. So again, some kids have adjusted, some kids are super resilient and they're doing fine. Other kids, you know, there are some red flags that, that we need to pay attention to. So it is so difficult, Lisa, when you hear stories from people you know about kids who won't even get out of bed to attend school remotely. Um, but so let me ask you um, specifically, what can parents do to support their kids who might be struggling? Right. So there are some I have like the top five greatest hits of what parents can do. And this of course is assuming that their child has not crossed over into something that's more pathological into you know, a depressive disorder or an anxiety disorder. But for kind of this garden variety, hopelessness and loneliness that we talked about, first and foremost, parents need to be present to their kids, check in with them on a regular basis, set aside some time, maybe once, twice a week at least, just to say, how are you? What's up for you? You know, what are you feeling? You know, what's some, what's some bad news? What are your concerns? And then ask your child, do you want to just kind of vent or let me know if you want any of my input? It's really important with um, teenagers, Mike, to allow them a space just to vent without parental input. Or maybe a kid does want some advice. So get that handled up front. Um, Reassure your children that you are there for them, that you are willing to listen, that it's not a burden to be present and to listen. So they don't, they may feel like, ah, oh, mom or dad are going through enough of their own stuff. I can't share my stuff, but let them know that you can handle listening and taking in and absorbing what they have to say. I would say again, this is one of something I've said before on this show, but get your kids outside, especially now get them moving. You know, if you need to throw a little money at them to rake leaves or rake a neighbor's leaves, um, to walk the dog, it's really important to get your kids out and moving. We know, I mean, there's enough evidence-based data that supports the idea that fresh air, physical exercise are helpful for our mental health. Um, if your kids do raise certain specific issues, help them to problem solve. You know, if they're missing their friends, this is the perfect time to say, look, we have 13 months of data. We know that outdoor transmission is incredibly low, especially when masks are worn. Let's arrange some meetups at a playground. Let's arrange, you know, for you to walk to the center with your friends. Um, let me help you do that. So problem solve. If they are sad about the lost year, you know, they, they missed their 16th birthday party or, you know, they, they're concerned about other losses. Brainstorm maybe things to look forward to in the summer as vaccinations increase. Maybe there's camps opening up again. Maybe there's a summer job that you could help them apply for. Um, perhaps your family may be planning a vacation tentatively. Um, so try to uh, identify things that they can look forward to. And of course, Mike, we know that kids look to the parents, even if it's not explicit. They are taking in what we are doing, what we are saying. So to the best that you can model, you know, good coping mechanisms, um, model, you know, perhaps 
exercising, journaling, listening to music, putting down your phone, um, and say out loud the, the silver linings. Identify something to be grateful for. Most of us can find something. You know, we were able to clean out the garage or spend more time perhaps with the immediate family. Um, identify those silver linings so that kids see that it's not hasn't been all bad. Um, and finally, the last tip is that if you are not the person right now that your kid wants to talk with, um, that's okay. That's very common in adolescence. But try to suggest another caring, trusted adult, um, a former coach, a neighbor, an aunt, a grandparent. Try to identify somebody for them to talk with. That's great advice, Lisa. And my next question, uh, uh, first for full disclosure, I am on the school committee and I am not voicing my opinions. I wanna ask you, is the return to in-person school likely to be helpful for youth? Um, and, and will some struggle with it? What, what are your thoughts? I think you just, you just um, articulated my thoughts. I think predominantly, Mike, most kids will do well going back into school. Um, they are hardwired for social interactions, for new experiences, um, to get out and be with peers. So I think for most of our kids, we'll do really well. However, as you suggested, there is a subset of kids who may be prone to feeling a little anxious in general. And going back into school will surface some anxieties. For example, who will I sit with at lunch? Will I have anyone to hang with at recess? Um, will there be a lot of traffic driving to the high school if that's something that's on my shoulders? Um, am I at greater risk for COVID-19? So for those of you who have kids who do tend to be a bit more anxious, just be aware that the return to school could surface some of those anxieties and you'll wanna talk about them and address them and allow space again for your child to express their concerns. And for parents who might be finding themselves at the end of their ropes, what, what can you offer them, Lisa? Well, first I would like to validate parents um, as we always suggest parents validate the kids. Let's pause and take a moment to say that, yeah, this has been a hard year on our kids and this has been a really hard year on parents. It has been uh, Sisyphusian with all that parents have had to do in front of them. So I just want to pause and say it has been hard, you know, and, and we're still hanging in there. It's not over yet, but um, it's been really hard. So if you're discouraged, if you're feeling um, a bit on edge, you have every right to be. Um, you, you know, you have every right to be exhausted for sure. Here's what I would say to parents. Pause and identify what you can do to fill your tank. You cannot run on empty. So if it's fresh air that you need, carve out time to get that fresh air time. If it's a good book, allow a half an hour a day for you to dive into that good book. You know, if it's, if it's talking on the phone to friends um, or meeting up with friends for a safe walk, do it. Think about what rejuvenates you, what restores you and make time to do it. Um, also, you're not alone. Many parents are struggling. Many parents feel exhausted. Reach out and try to come up with a way to, to support each other, sharing strategies, listening. Um, the Belmont Wellness Coalition has a parenting group. We meet once a month for an hour and exactly what parents come there to do is to share and to vent and to hear strategies that work for other parents. So I invite parents to um, consider joining our group or contact me and I'll help you set up one of your own. That's great advice, Lisa. Um, are there any other resources that you can offer parents? So one resource, Mike, has to do with if you think your child has crossed over and may need professional help, a lot of parents are incredibly discouraged because the supply um, of therapists is way um, out of whack for the demand for those therapists. Basically, they just are not taking new patients. So teencounseling.com is a resource that I've heard that can help identify therapists who are taking new patients. Um, Psychology Today also has a site. I would say contact your insurance company. They often have a list of therapists um, that are covered by your insurance. And Child in Mind is a website that I use all the time and they will have resources for mental health and just parenting guidance in general. All right, and Lisa, just to mention another service that, that I'm aware of, um, uh, 
um, teledoc.com, and there are others um, like this. Uh, work with many insurance companies, and they will refer you for phone and video visits to doctors, counselors, and psychiatrists. Great resource. Thank you, Mike. All right, Lisa, so much. I'm sorry. Thank you so much for walking us through this today. Such an important topic. This is Belmont Journal News Now. I'm Mike Crowley, and I'll see you next time. Yes, see you next time, Mike. Thank you.